Are you getting enough sleep these days? We return to our study in Acts. We come now to chapter 20, and we find there a young man who is in desperate need of sleep. Paul's preaching at a residence in Troas, and it's late in the hour. And we're told there in verse 9, Seated in the window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. Notice Luke's addition of how Paul preached on and on. Likely Luke himself was growing weary with the night and the hectic schedule they were on regarding these missionary journeys. My family was at Silver Dollar City a while back. We were at the Heritage Hall and there performing was a, uh, an Irish woman and she was playing these beautiful um, Irish ballads. She had just finished the first song and was beginning the next. These very peaceful, uh, calm, uh, lovely melodies. Uh, but when she finished that first one and began the second, a voice who was near me and who will remain unnamed yelled out at the top of his voice, Oh no, not again. It was time to go. I once noted to a group that Paul preached for hours when they were talking about the length of the service, to which someone responded, well, you start preaching as well as Paul, and I bet we could listen for hours too. Well played. But the truth is, Paul was not known as being a great preacher. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 10, that there were some people that said of him that his letters were weighty and forceful, but in person, he is unoppressive and his speaking amounts to nothing. Those who are gathered here in the upper room are not here because Paul's a great speaker. They're not here because they didn't have anything else to do. They are drawn, though, rather by the power of the gospel and the words of life. The truth is that even though the most heart is uh, maybe stirred fully, it still resides within a weak body. Matthew 26, 40, Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he asked them, could you not keep watch with me for one hour? But he said, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. These are certainly peculiar times. And we have some meeting now at the building on Sunday mornings and uh, many others who are watching online, as they should be. Uh, those who are high risk or, or maybe having some health issues of their own, better to remain home. There will come a time, though, when we will begin gathering more, when it will be safe to come back together. And I'm hopeful that those of you who are out there um, will... I, break this new habit of being home and come back again when the coast is clear to be with your brothers and sisters in Christ again. This group <clears throat> gathered here in the upper room to hear the gospel were real people with real challenges and real limitations. They chose, though, to come, and in a moment, it seemed perhaps that cost was too high. In verse 9, seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. And when he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Eutychus likely moved to the window just to get some fresh air, probably the candles and such burning. There was smoke. And before they knew it, he went right out the window. It may have been humorous, except the fact it was several stories up. In such moments, there's not much you can do unless you happen to be there with somebody like Paul. Verse 10, he threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him, and he said, don't be alarmed, he is alive. What do they do then? Maybe call it a night, cut their losses and go home? Nope. They return back to worship, verse 11. And Paul went upstairs again, broke bread and ate, and after talking until daylight, he left. Why on earth would they return to worship after such a chaotic moment? Well, first of all, because that would be quite natural. People would want to gather again to give praise and glory to God. 
And secondly, the gospel is important, and even more so now as they realize it has the power to raise the dead. Verse 7, on the first day of the week, we were told there that they'd come together to break bread, and Paul spoke to the people because he intended to leave the next day. He kept on talking until midnight. Paul's speaking so long because he's about to leave, and there are things that they desperately need to hear, and they're not there out of obligation or guilt. They're there because Paul has the words of life. Verse 12, the people took the young man home after it was all done alive, and they were greatly comforted. Many come in spite of lots of inconveniences. And again, this virus is not an inconvenience. It's a serious matter. And many people, again, should remain home if they're high risk or may have symptoms along that line. But in time, it will be safe to come back together again, Lord willing. And many will come, not because it's convenient, not because they have anything else to do, there are nothing else to do. They'll come because they want to hear the words of life. And they want to share those words with each other. I remember a while back, I had someone visit our congregation and they began the conversation saying, Steve, there's a lot of kids who are making a lot of noise. I could see where they were going. I knew the circumstance. They came from a small church in a more rural area um, without, you know, I, I, I just could see it coming. So I began saying, look, I'm sorry, we do have a lot of the young families here. And, um, and sometimes it's, you know, it's difficult. And they said, oh, no, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. I said, as you know, I came from a small church. We had no young people. When I hear these children's voices, I rejoice because it's been a long time since I've heard the voices of children. I appreciate all those parents who come and worry what people are thinking. But I tell you, I'll tell you what they're thinking. They're thinking, they're thanking God that they have children still in the church and that you are going through the inconvenience to bring them. I know we have a lot of others that overcome a lot of things to come together. And I hope that this new habit of being home will be broken in time as we return back to the body of Christ. Many of people today may say that, um, you know, that, for example, I miss a meal. And I don't think anybody, though, in, in that circumstance would say, well, I, I missed a meal, and well, now I've missed two meals, so I, I might as well just not eat altogether now that I've kind of got this new habit. Or I missed a night of sleep, so I might as well just not sleep anymore. No, in fact, the more meals we, we miss, the hungrier we become. The more sleep we are without, the more we desire sleep. That's the way it should be with Christ. And those moments of, of fasting without the Lord and the presence of God's people, we should hunger for more and need more. For those who may say, I just don't have the energy level, then I remind you, Matthew eleven twenty six. 26, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There is a weariness that sleep cannot fill, a hunger that food cannot satisfy. Only the Lord can. Isaiah forty thirty. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. It is true that if Eutychus had left early that night and got home, he would have got much more sleep. It's also true that he wouldn't have died. But it's also true that he would not have been raised from the dead. What an experience that has to be. Paul challenges the Ephesians as well as us in Ephesians 5.14. Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? 
Then wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ.